Hey everyone, Joe and Isaiah is from the Automator here. And uh, this tool, like if you know, if, you, if you're back in the XP days, adding something to your Windows startup was super easy, whether it's an auto hockey script or anything, right? Nowadays, it, it's, you gotta kind of hack it and it was ridiculous. And so I asked Isaiah, is like, hey, let's find it. Let's make a tool that makes it really easy to add either an auto hockey script or any, any sort of program you want to have it always start up. Or, you know, let's also be able to disable stuff from the startup because especially when you buy like a, a computer from, you know, like Dell or Gateway or whatever is out these days. It has a lot of, a lot of tools that, yeah. yeah. So much stuff. Now, so, the yeah. funny thing is that Microsoft has its own tools for checking on those things, but the tool itself doesn't let you add something right. to the startup you can right disable stuff. Right. It, it allows you to disable, right? And, and even disabling it, I don't remember if it allows you to delete from it like delete the entry, it just disables it. I don't think it. so, it's just disabled. Right, it just disables it, right? Now, uh, what about if I have a script that I want to be executing all the time? How do I do that? Now, uh, you would have to manually put it in the in the editor, in the registry. Um, if you don't know how to do that, it might seem like a very big hack, right? Because you have to navigate these uh, register keys and stuff. But uh, it is usually not that easy, not that complicated, but it is something that it, you're not used to do very often. So it might why not have a tool, a little GUI that makes it easy. Right. Why not have like something that just allows you to just select a file? Like a startup that's it, folder. Right? Yeah. Like <laughs> what you used to have. Yeah. You do have a startup folder, but I'm not sure if that's... Uh... You just can't easily access it. No, you have to navigate to it, right? But if you have yeah. a script that just select the file and that's it, right? It would be kind of like cool, right? <laughs> so that's what we did. We went ahead and created uh, this little script that does that for you. Again, this is uh, free. It is something that you could go ahead and take a look at the code and modify it if, however you see fit. The one good thing about it is that it keeps track of whatever you disabled before so that if you want to re-enable it, it's not like you lost the information there, right? So. Uh, if we run the script, it's just going to go ahead and list whatever is set up to be run automatically for the current users, right? So we are not going to access anything that is created by the administrator of the computer because you would need to run the script in administrator mode and we don't want to do that right now. So it is just whatever it is set up for the user. In my case, there was there was a, a very big list of it. Like there was a lot of things, but in our case, uh, I just removed them, right? So now I just have these three things, but you could go ahead and disable something, right? And this is gonna be kept. So if you want to enable it back later on, it is not something that deleted it completely from your registry and you will not have a way to access it later, right? And one thing to clarify, because I was misunderstood with how this worked uh, initially is, this script, you run it, but it doesn't stay running. So it'll make changes no. to your registry. Um, and you can close it and that's it, right? Yeah, it doesn't keep running. It doesn't add itself to the startup, you know? No, it doesn't do that either. So that says that if there's, for example, a program like Zoom by itself that adds itself to the registry whenever it starts up, then it's going to add itself all the time. So the next time you run Zoom, it's going to add itself to the startup folder if you right. don't select the option to not do that, right? But in our case, it is just for disabling quickly. We are going to handle that later on, but for now it's just disabling quick stuff that don't add themselves like that. Um, but not only you can, and, and, and the main purpose of this, and the name implies it, is to add stuff to the startup. <laughs> so you have a button here to add something. It's just going to ask you, Will, what do you want to add to the startup? And you just select whatever it is. It doesn't matter if it is an auto hotkey script or if it is uh, an executable. Whatever you want, you can add it to the startup folder. As long as and it's that's it. Just some sort of a program, right? Yeah, of course. Because if not, it's going to give you an error. It's going to say, like, this program cannot be run or something. But uh, so long as it is associated with an existing program or if it isn't, is an executable file, then yeah, it's just going to execute by itself. You see how easy it was? It's just going to ask you what it is you want to add and then you just hit OK. That's it. In this case, I didn't select any files, so it's going to tell me like, hey, you didn't select anything. But in any case, if I don't want it any longer, I just disable it and that's it. So basically, it's a very simple script. It is something that uh, you can modify it or if you want to take a look at how it keeps track of what it was disabled, it is just an any file that has whatever you had disabled with the pass with the path to it. If you want to delete this any file, you can go ahead and do so, 
And now when you restart the script, that that uh, uh, thing that was disabled is not gonna show up on the, on the script itself anyway. So it's very simple. Uh, the one thing, what I think it adds value to it is just the fact that you can add stuff to start up very easily, easily uh, that you couldn't do before, right? Especially, I mean, the thing is people starting out with auto hockey, and again, it could be anything, but you're like, hey, I want this to run every time I launch my computer. And it used to be so easy to do that. And with Windows now, 10. Now, yeah, some people don't find a way to easily do it, but now you have a way to just click a button that, and that's it, right? In any case, okay, so in any case, yeah. What we're gonna do is that, uh, in any case, you can go ahead and remove that and add it very easily and just learn how you do that. How you can take a look at the source code and see exactly which, which locations I'm actually using to do that. And you know, you learn how to do this kind of stuff for your own scripts. If you want to go ahead and, uh, in my case, my AutoHotKey Toolkit script is starting by default for me, right? And it is an option and I have this option how do I do that? Well, that's how I do it. I target that specific uh, place, which is for the current user, and I add the script there. And if you select the option to not do that, then I just remove it. That's how all the other programs do it themselves. It's the same thing how all the other programs do that. They just add themselves to, the, to this particular registry keyword, if you wish. And uh, they just add or remove themselves from it. Four, that's what this I script does by yeah. itself as well. Right. Awesome. Well, thanks, man. I uh, hope everyone enjoys using this. It is a, it's a very powerful, easy to use script. Okay. Cheers.